Welcome to the Visio Map Editor tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the Icon Library Manager, then we're going to learn to add an icon to the map. First of all, to add an icon to the map, we select the Icon tool from the Drawing tab. Some frequently used icons will be available, which is useful for quickly adding icons to the map. If we want to choose a different icon, we'll use the Icon Library Manager. The Icon Library Manager can be opened by clicking on the plus button. The Icon Library Manager helps us manage the icons that are available to the map. VisiGlobe provides several icon libraries that you are free to use. The default libraries include two different VisiGlobe styles, Default and Sand. Both of these libraries share the same image, only the background colour is different. The default library uses a white background, the sand library uses a sand coloured background. There is also the Iga icon library. Iga is publicly available icons that are targeted for passenger and pedestrian type maps. Depending on the Visio Map Editor access associated with your account, you may also upload your own icons to the icon library manager. The icon may be either associated with the domain or with the map. An icon associated with the domain may be used for all the maps within your domain. An icon associated with the map will only be visible for that map. For this demonstration, we will choose the map library and upload a new icon to it. First, we select the library we want to associate the icon to. Then, we select the upload button. This prompts us for our icon. The specifications for the icons are as follows. The icon must be in PNG format. The icon's width and height must be equal, so the icon must be a square. The icon's width and height should be a power of 2. And yes, transparencies are supported. Now that the icon is updated, let's select it and add it to the map. When adding an icon to the map, simply click and drag on the map to place the icon. To modify it further, we can use the Select tool. To activate the Select tool, either select it with your mouse or use the keyboard shortcut N for November. Once the icon is selected, we can control its orientation and size. Holding down the Shift key while rotating the icon will limit the rotation to 45 degrees at a time. If we want to force the icon size to be the same as the other icons, then we can modify it directly within the Tools view. First, we click on another icon to copy its size. Then, we return to our new icon. We can update its width to be consistent with the others. It's also possible to, le to select several icons by holding down the Shift key as you select each icon. And then we can modify all the widths at the same time. Also, using the Select tool, it's possible to control the orientation type associated with the icon. The orientation type determines how the icon is orientated within the map. The orientation type is used once the map has been built and it is viewed with the final SDK. There are three orientation types, flat, fixed, and facing. I'm going to demonstrate these by example. Let's choose three icons close together and we will apply a different orientation type for each. I will apply the flat orientation to the elevator fixed orientation to the arrow, and facing orientation to the stairs. Now, using the preview feature, we can see what a final effect this has on those icons. We see the elevator icon, which has the flat orientation, remains flat on the ground. If we rotate the map, the icon rotates such that it's always upright. The arrow, which has the fixed orientation, is also flat on the ground, however when we rotate the map, its orientation remains fixed, such that it points towards the same point within the map. The stairs icon, which has the facing orientation, is always facing towards us, no matter how we rotate the map. Okay, that's all for icons, thank you.